artificial addition or actual abandonment. Lychee users are logging off. Centauri Carbon carbonizes and flat bottom bowls make the rockin' world go round. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 216. We're back from China. Let's get into it. Starting off with something that has been quite the buzz in our Discord and heavily in the Lychee or Lychee Slicer Discord, they have added generative AI to their slicer. Hate, hate, hate. Double hate. Loathe entirely. We can see they're calling it Lychee Gen, which you can take a prompt into a generative AI system and you get a model, which okay seems interesting but it is ai crap that many users don't want here's the big issue training data where's it coming from how are they getting it and what are their plans to maintain a decent amount of training data suffice to say there's a lot of criticism and people are not going down without a fight what really sums it up for me is the top comment here on their subreddit saying as much as i hate to say it it doesn't matter ai is the way the whole world is going companies aren't going to stop the cat is out of the bag sorry but it's the truth i have to agree it's only a matter of time before we see more of this stuff come out from other organizations however it doesn't mean you're not allowed to be upset and take your money elsewhere the issue is there's few places to take your money especially ones that have had the support that Lychee has had for all of these years. But if we look at their actual subreddit, my god, a lot of these posts, not great. This is what they tell you that you should get, preview-wise, with the generative AI, and, uh, well, that's, that's what you actually get. And while that's certainly better than any sculpting I could do, these two things are not the same. They're not even close to the same. And it's part of what the industry calls enshinification. Something where you're adding features that nobody wants for reasons nobody wants, and you're just bloating, whether it's software, hardware, or something like that, for the sole purpose of bloating. Nobody likes bloating. And we can see comments from their Discord are kind of following in this vein. We can see that moderators have dropped off saying that they saw the announcement and they said they don't want to be a part of it. And while there has been some clarification where your library models inside of the slicer are not being trained for their new generative system, this wasn't made clear from the beginning. And it's left a lot of people feeling really kind of mistreated overall. And I think Chris Cat like kind of puts it into perspective for a lot of users saying, if the pre-support companies move away from Lychee, a big chunk of users will follow. Lychee is a go-to because many creators provide pre-done and pre-supported files inside of Lychee Slicer. That's the deal. You don't want to use a slicer where you have to do all the supports on your own. Part of resin printing is getting the supports right. And while there are tools like UV tools, a software that really help you get it right it is still a challenge to do those supports yourself and because of that a lot of users say i would much rather have somebody else do it for me and pay a premium to have it done and user camologics says what's sad is lychee could have leaned into ai and not lose the goodwill of their fan base they could have focused on improving the tedious parts of slicing with ai like better island detection it said they puke out this garbage why do we all print the models we do at least for them, it's for the love of the art. AI-generated art has no love and has no soul. Why they thought integrating that, which runs counter to their customer's entire reason for using their software, baffles me. No one wants this, and they should absolutely walk this back. And if they do walk it back, I'll celebrate them for it, but we'll not forget this. That is as level-headed as I could expect from people that are currently pretty pissed off about what's going on. I believe if Lychee had reached out to their users, done a poll, and allowed them to have some sort of voice before they launched this program, that it likely would have gone over quite a bit better and they could have made changes to it before it launched. I understand that they're utilizing this as a means to open it up to those that are new to resin 3D printing that want to mess around a little bit, but their core base of people are, let's go with very passionate 
about their craft and are very vocal about it and believe that AI and the generative systems that follow it are actively ruining the industry as a whole. And certainly utilizing AI for things like island detection, suction cups, and things like that on your prints would be amazing. A huge benefit of bringing in some sort of air quotes over AI, probably more like a large language model or some sort of trained data set. That would be awesome. And I think a lot of people would actively welcome that into their ecosystem and their workflow. This, however, is not the right way. And look, we've had the Lychee team on our podcast. We actively use their slicer. We like their slicer, but I don't like it now. I think they've kind of just given the middle finger to their entire user base and said, we really don't care about old folks that have been doing this for a while. We want to bring in the new individuals and kind of ignore our current fan base. And for those that are pissed off, I tell you to vote with your wallet. That's the best way to show companies that their decisions are good or bad. Support them or don't. And if you do want to support, my name's Grant. This is 3D Musketeers and Print Fix Friday, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose. And you know, talk about some of the news topics that come across our desk. If you do like this kind of stuff, leave a like, get subscribed and all of that. And if you are dealing with printer issues and want to get your printers running properly, you can reach out to us, film a video, post it to YouTube and tag us in the description so we can see what's going on, work with you to try to get your machine solved because nobody likes machines that are going bad. And certainly there's no generative AI yet that can replace me. Would I want that? I don't know. I kind of like doing these videos. They're fun. And while we did plan on doing one in China, we actually didn't find enough failed prints at FiberSeek, aka a NISO print, which you can actually see our live stream of it. We'll card to it so you guys can take a look. Go enjoy it. Let me know your thoughts and uh, <laughs> tell me what you think about when someone says, I bet you can't break it. And then they give it to a Florida man. I think we all know what happened. But it was an amazing trip and a huge thank you to FiberSeek for making that happen. There's going to be a lot of content coming out in the days to come. Uh, even where we did a tug of war with one of their parts. I think you guys will enjoy it. Moving on to a Centauri Carbon Fire. This one is from Discord user Lucky in the Open Centauri Discord, who we have reached out to to get more information. All we have right now is this short video of the machine being burned. Let's take a look at it. They smelled smoke. They went to go check on their machine. We can see smoke billowing out of the machine, although it's not showing up the best on camera. This machine is modded with what appears to be a bit of a top hat there, but everything else looks reasonably stock. And then we look into the machine to lots and lots of dark, dark carbon. We do not have confirmation on exactly what has caused this. However, best guess is going to be that cable that we've been keeping an eye on now for a little bit. This is the worst that we've ever seen a 3D printer in, I would certainly say the last few months in terms of a fire. Stop the presses, stop the presses, hold up, hold up, time out, time out, time out. Wasn't, uh, wasn't from the printer. The user, Lucky, decided to clean the bed with isopropyl alcohol, then apply some glue, and uh, didn't wait for it to flash off before turning on uh, the, the heat bed. So what we saw in there was not, in fact, an electrical fire, but was, in fact, isopropyl alcohol and glue sticks smoking a little bit because they got a little toasty. That's a much easier solution than I would have thought. Also, why are we using glue sticks still? What is this, 2010? These are flexible PEI plates, people. You don't need glue stick on them. Glue stick should only be used as a method to reduce surface adhesion, not promote it. And isopropyl alcohol is not great for cleaning print beds with, because instead of removing the oil, grease, and grime from your grubby mitts, what it really does is just move it around. Use an ammonia-based glass cleaner like Windex or the generic version of such that you can find. Literally, the spray bottle for mine is back sitting on the Mark IV. Thankfully, this issue is nowhere near as big of a problem as any of us thought. Certainly, I was expecting this to be much more complicated and something tells me uh, the editors are thankful that they get paid by the hour on this video. So, uh, back to past Grant. Moving on to a little Freddie Mercury in your day where flat bottom bowls make the rockin' world go round. Oh! 
I much more agree with the song, but hey, whatever. That's between you and yours, I guess. We can see here that this user is dealing with a really serious line on any bowls that they are printing with this, well, overhang. We've got a clear line and then some build up here on one side. Now going over to the original post, we see that this is on an H2D 0.24 millimeter layers with standard settings, bed temp is at 60, very generic stuff here. This is kind of like the Benchy hull line where you have a slight over extrusion that is creating extra material where you go from flat smooth layers to the rest of the curve of the bowl, right? So that's the inside bottom of the bowl. That's where this line is occurring. But we can also see some curled edges. This curled edge here is gonna be due to the H2D and other Bambi printers, and quite frankly, pretty much every printer on the market, having cooling only from one side outside of the cooling from the hot end itself. The hot end cooling does come from all sides on the H2D, but it does only have single-sided additional part cooling inside of the chamber. What's happening here is that you're running way too thick of layers, way too fast of speed, and nowhere near enough cooling. If you want a bowl like this, th this curved surface to look really good, check out adding adaptive layer control. You can do adaptive layer height on your bowl so that the round surface on the bowl itself is much finer layers so that they don't have this issue where they start to curl up and it will produce a much smoother surface finish and then it can go to 0.24 for the areas where it runs just fine we do see another line here i'm not exactly certain what caused that that could be just an environmental issue but we can see that overhangs look good here look like crap over here and that tells us that this side was not facing the cooling slow the printer down reduce your layer height and well try to see the lowest temperature you can print the filament at before it starts to get a little messy those all should help but the h2d is known for having really really good print quality but with high speed printing at thick layers you're going to have cooling issues no matter what machine it is slow it down more cooling you'll be good to go last but not least here we've got too much squish on a centauri carbon where that first layer just doesn't look good we can see that it is Orca and they think they've got too much squish and they're asking if they should manipulate their Z offset. It's overture PLA at 215C. Absolutely mess with that Z offset. We would wanna see the bottom side of the print and specifically that first layer to kind of see where we're at with your Z offset. Looking at the photo, we can actually zoom in quite a bit. It looks like you might be too far away and it's producing like lines of spaghetti, but it's close enough that that spaghetti is sticking enough. You want that first layer to feel and look like glass. If your ruffles have ridges, you're too close. And if there are valleys between the lines, your nozzle is too far from the build plate. We did an entire video on Z offset. We'll card to it so you guys can take a look. It is absolutely worth reviewing. If you haven't looked at it in a while, you are dealing with some Z offset issues. And remember, especially for the guy that's been talking with me who's local, Z offset is not always at zero and going negative on the Z offset is totally fine. As you get close to two millimeters plus or minus, it's time to look at recalibrating your probe system or look at cleaning that nozzle if it is like a nozzle tap system. You want to make sure that you are not having too much Z offset in any direction because if that is the case, you might have something loose. And if that looseness gets worse, your printer can go for a bit of a mining session like we saw in previous Print Fix Fridays with the Flashforge AD5M. As a child, I yearned for the mines. But what do you think? Looking at the photo, it could go either way, but because I'm seeing some rounded edges on the bottom of this print, I think they're a little bit too far and need to bring that nozzle closer to the bed. I did think the Centauri Carbon had automatic first layer but i mean at 300 bucks i guess i can't expect it would love to know what your thoughts are and if you have a centauri carbon do you have this issue do you have issues with your z offset wandering like that but if you do like some wandering make sure to join as a channel member and hey at the five dollar tier and higher you get your name listed right next to me in lights because jacob and i spent about three hours wandering around downtown shanghai 
uh, trying to make our way to the financial center. Ended up walking in the completely wrong direction. Got some great food. And yes, there's an entire food podcast. Those videos aren't out yet, but will be coming out very soon. So if that's your type of thing, make sure to join. And at the $10 junior high, you get to come hang out in our private Discord where uh, you guys have had streams of us hanging out while in China. You've had behind the scenes photos and videos that have been posted before they've gone public anywhere else. And lots of awesome content there where we talk a lot of business as well. Oh, and hey, this weekend, tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday, the 1st and 2nd of November is the 1440 Maker Show. So go check it out. We'll link to it in the description. We will be on there Sunday night, hanging out, talking with the other content creators and creative makers and that kind of thing. And I'm sure we'll be popping in and out through different panels throughout the weekend. We're raising money for the World Central Kitchen. So if you've got some money laying around that you would love to donate to a good cause, go check them out. 1440 Makers, links below. Look forward to seeing you guys there. That's all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Centauri Carbon carbonizes and flat bottom bowls make the walking. Damn it, I almost had that in one take. Son of the walking. Waka waka. <laughs> what am I? Pac Man? Uh... Always gargle before a takeoff. Waka waka. All right, let's go.